Every living being is an energetic creation. We all occupy an energetic living universe. Every single thing that we see oscillates at a particular frequency. Nothing is fixed or constant or stagnating in this energetic sea of information, which means that even the things that you don't associate as living conscious beings actually retain a certain energetic imprint to them. It just might not be something that you actively associate with. When you move your perspective to embody the reality that everything is indeed alive, conscious, and energetic in nature, you can start to see the world as an output of frequency. Now, what is frequency? This pertains to the idea of energy and vibration, frequency being the rate at which an object vibrates, and every single thing has a frequency to it. Every organ has a frequency. Your body as a whole operates at a certain frequency, a hertz value, which essentially dictates the energetic wavelength at which your physical organism operates. Now, this also means that every single thing in the matrix that you are a match to has a frequency equivalent to it, and it has an imprint on your overall frequency. Everything in your environment which you respond to has an imprint on your frequency. Every interaction you have, every person you meet, every food you consume, everything you smell, every single thing that you encounter in a physical sense which has an energetic effect on you ultimately impacts your frequency. This is one way of looking at the impact that everything has on a more metaphysical level in your own inner matrix. What you're doing as an energetic being through your interactions with the world is you're allowing your field to be permeated by all of these external influences. And the reason why many people don't understand why they have the ability to control or to co-create their reality is because they only see that it is the input of frequencies that determines their overall frequency. For example, what this means is that when you're constantly focused on the external factors that have an impact on your mood, for example, the way that people perceive you, what people tell you, what things enter your world, things from the weather to the things that you're hearing on the news to the different things that are occurring as an external impact to you, all of these things are just part of the multitude of factors that can impact your frequency, but the ultimate determinant is you. Because what happens in your consciousness is you are choosing whether or not the external influences and frequencies end up skewing your internal frequency. Because the way in which you choose to maintain a resonant state in your reality is contingent entirely on you. It depends on how you choose to be the moderator of all of these external signals. And how you choose to align your antenna of consciousness to the field around you is contingent on your own focus, your own attention, and your energetic capacity within your being. The biggest consciousness shift that we can make to align with the notion that we are indeed co-creators of reality is by realizing that our consciousness is what ultimately determines our frequency. And when you can learn to tune your consciousness to shift your internal frequency from a state of your own inner alignment, you can choose to keep a constantly elevated frequency. Now, why would this be important? Let's think about every single thing that we experience in reality as a currency of our frequency. For example, your mood, your perception, your status of abundance, the health of your overall being, the quality of your relationships, the way that you feel on a day-to-day -day basis, your physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual well-being are all aspects of your personal frequency. So when you choose to elevate your frequency, what you're essentially choosing to do is to become the conscious creator of your personal inner space. By becoming conscious of the impact of all external frequencies to you, you start manipulating the way that you respond to them. And that ultimately is the key. It's not choosing to drown out the effect of everything outside of you, but rather choosing to be conscious of everything that has an impact on you. And that is what allows you to maintain emotional neutrality, a state in which you are so actively conscious of the frequencies that you're letting into your world that you can choose to be the moderator of the best experience happening within you at all times. This mindful way of being encapsulates the nature of consciousness. This is the level of awareness at which you no longer care about being a victim to your environment. You no longer believe that if there is anything negative that happens to you, you must experience a negative outcome in reality. This is a way to transcend any notion that the universe is against you or you are stuck at any toxic patterns or situations that have been caused by your past. 
oftentimes we will experience a very low frequency state because we feel that we are a hostage to the situations created outside of our personal will. For example, if you find yourself in a difficult family situation and you're affected by people that are mistreating you or making you feel like you don't belong, you might want to push that blame onto them and feel that your emotional state is contingent upon your surroundings and the people around you, how they treat you, how they perceive you, and how they make you feel. Now, you can change this dynamic entirely by realizing that though you are part of a situation which is seemingly outside of your conscious control, you can change the way that you perceive it, the way you perceive those people you're involved with and your own reaction to them. You can change the way that you perceive why the situation had to be manifested for you to discover how to gain an upper hand over your own emotional state so as to learn how to neutralize your frequency in spite of all of the negative interference in your reality. To do so, you must first understand that nothing that is happening to you is happening to punish you. The universe is never vehemently against you, nor is it trying to make you experience a low frequency state of being by default. When you experience a low frequency state, it's easy to get consumed by the thought processes that support that low frequency state. For example, if you're experiencing any kind of negative emotion tied to any kind of a root cause in your past, you might be fixated on all of the negative thoughts and emotions which that initial experience programmed you to be feeling. For example, if you experience some kind of fear, shame, guilt, or anger in your childhood, you might be experiencing similar bouts of those low frequency emotions, making you feel that you are either worthless, helpless, defenseless, or simply not powerful enough to shift your low frequency state of being. This makes your entire reality appear to be an exact projection of your past, a mirrored experience, if you will, of everything that you once experienced, which you now feel like you are, by default, programmed to experience. Now let's go to square one again. If we're to think about us being energetic beings, and this all being a matrix of mind and a projection of our consciousness, then we cannot really say that anyone is destined to experience either a high or low frequency reality. So it seems like a surprise why some people seem to be doomed to experience negative patterns, lower conscious states of being, all kinds of health issues, and issues within their love life, relationships, their personal pursuits in work and otherwise. Meanwhile, some people seem to be perpetually healthy, happy, lucky, and successful. Now, why would this be? We have to think about the initial programming which laid the template for the frequency that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis. The thoughts that we experience are the main subconscious precursor to all the things that we end up experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis. This is why it's so important to think about what you subconsciously hold as the thought paradigm about yourself and the world around you. If you by default are supplying yourself with low frequency thoughts to support the notion that either you are bad, unhappy, worthless, poor, or any other variety of negative assumptions about yourself, and the world likewise is a negative projection of what you are experiencing within yourself, then reality is only going to be confirming your own subconscious biased state. It's by no surprise that some people are constantly pessimistic and experiencing this broken loop of negative thoughts, pessimistic beliefs that are only being confirmed by more health issues, difficult situations, toxic patterns, and misfortune, which is manifested by that very subconscious state of negative belief. Now, on the other hand, if you want to start shifting your beliefs, start thinking about what it would take to install a high-frequency command system for your own subconscious mind. You have to start reevaluating every single thing that went into the creation of your personal frequency. This means looking at every aspect of your life, which includes a frequency component to it meaning your health, your health issues, how you feel on a daily basis, what thoughts, limiting beliefs, and different kinds of mental processes are going on that dictate your entire worldview, how your interactions and relationships inform your personal frequency, what makes you feel sad, lonely, afraid, angry, what kinds of triggers come up in your daily life, where do you feel fulfilled and not so fulfilled? Where do people seem to understand you and where do you also turn away from yourself? Now, the reason why this is so important to go really introspective and to think deeply about every constituent of the frequency program in your reality is that if you try to bypass this process and just jump to the reality of you're a happy person, you're abundant, you're free, you're fulfilled, maybe you start saying happy affirmations and start declaring that you are now a happy, abundant, successful person who knows exactly what to do to live that perfect life. You may be experiencing a subconscious state of denial. 
and here's why. Unless you first understand and accept the negative beliefs underlying your subconscious programming, you're never going to be in a state of alignment to that new paradigm of conscious thought. You're going to be subconsciously experiencing a dissonant state to the reality that you want to be experiencing. This is why if you're someone who experiences a void within yourself where you feel unworthy, you have low self-esteem, all kinds of personal issues which are emanating from your childhood, for example, if you try to declare that you are confident, happy, successful, and living the life of your dreams, somewhere deep down you're going to be realizing that you are lying to yourself. For as long as you're going to continue to dismiss the inner reality of truth within you, the negative beliefs, the thought processes that originated your frequency condition, the trauma that you have to deal with, the people you have to forgive, the qualities you have to let go of, the healing that has to be achieved through inner acceptance and through truly seeing and acknowledging what you're going through deep down, you're never going to be able to transcend those hurdles to the high frequency condition you want to be experiencing. Because here's the thing, if you're experiencing a lower frequency, what you're still experiencing are the untransmuted emotions which keep you in that low frequency domain. These are things usually associated with situations that were outside of your conscious control. Different things that people told you that you didn't want to be feeling, perhaps mistakes you made, betrayal you've gone through, different kinds of difficult life lessons which were difficult to come to terms with at the time and might have made you feel like it's better to suppress the reality of those things affecting you than to effectively accept and to deal with them. If you try to simply transcend a difficult emotion without understanding why it arose and what you're still clinging on to deeply that does not allow you to move forward to a more conscious paradigm in which you can freely accept that emotion, you're still going to keep manifesting the same experience. This is ultimately the reason why we manifest the same people in different bodies, the same kinds of mistakes, difficulties, misfortune, and all kinds of different horrible circumstances which make us feel like the universe is against us when ultimately we are just manifesting the same lessons to learn. To learn how to come into alignment with what we are experiencing and what we are manifesting, which is a deep lesson about self-love, self-acceptance, and the reality that we have to align with from within. The reason why we experience anything in our life is because we are a match to it. Accepting this is going to be one of the most difficult things that you can do for yourself, but if you can do this, you are guaranteed to live a more depolarized, neutral, loving, and accepting existence. What you must realize is that every single thing that you align with, consciously or subconsciously in your reality, is a vibrational match to you. It is something that you aligned with because of a thought, intention, action, behavior, or subconscious program which made you be drawn to that individual thing, event, or circumstance. Within every single one of these encounters you make in your reality, there is a lesson. There is a teacher, there is a cause and an effect which you are irrevocably tied to, which means that the sooner you come to understand that what you're experiencing is a reflection of you, of how you're feeling and thinking about yourself at a deeply core level, you'll be able to understand that to change your life, you must essentially just change yourself. To change what you're experiencing externally to you, you must change the programs you're dwelling on within yourself. You must look to your own mind and heart and understand why is it that certain patterns are still lingering within you? What have you not yet let go of that are still continuing to pop up as signs, synchronicities, and difficulties in your physical reality that you must learn to come to terms with within yourself to move on and to experience a different quality of your world? In order to raise your frequency, you must think about how do you want to be feeling at all times and commit to your own joy by learning to accept every single thing that has come in the way of it. You must learn to perceive yourself as an object of consciousness that must be nourished through loving intention, through the desire to uplift yourself and to seek the best for yourself in every single capacity, meaning you look for the relationships which support your growth. You eat the foods that elevate your consciousness. You move your body in ways that align you from within to without. You listen to the music that makes your soul sing. You do the things and submerse yourself in experiences that make you truly feel alive and that make you feel like life is worth living because you are choosing to devote yourself to your own happiness and bliss. Only when you can make this transition away from a reality in which you are forced to encounter things that you don't want to be experiencing to a world in which you are actively pursuing the best for yourself by A, coming to terms with who you are and what you have and B, choosing to make the best choices in alignment with the best version of yourself can you learn to make this transition? To merge with the best version of yourself, you must understand that what you have currently is a reflection of who you are. 
and to become the best version of you, you must learn to elevate yourself to become a better match to the things that you ultimately want to have nourished the reality you want to be experiencing.